Hi guys, I'm Stephen Sun, real estate broker in the city of Toronto. In the blink of an eye, April has already gone by. Um, I don't know about you, but to me, I think the time went by a lot quicker while we're all stuck at home, maybe because we're all trying to work, deal with the kids and household chore at the same time while being self-quarantined. So time passes rather quickly. Now, today, the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board has released the overall average number for the month of April 2020. And I'm gonna share those numbers with you, but I'm gonna compare them uh, to March and I'm also gonna compare them to um, the year before. Um, afterwards, I will try to break them with average numbers down into two different categories, freehold versus condominium, to give you a better overall picture as to how um, the market is doing in different categories and different price points. So let's start. Let's do a quick recap of my prediction. Um, back in March, um, I posted a video of the March numbers, um, early April, and um, I, had, I made predictions about how April was gonna do. If you haven't watched it yet, I suggest you go and watch that. Um, but I'll give you a quick recap. So basically what I said was, um, I predicted that uh, home prices would drop about eight to uh, 10% um, and also the number of sales is going to drop about 40 to 50 percent so that's April compared to March now let's see if my prediction was correct here we have the overall numbers that was just released today um, April 2020 we're still being uh, negatively impacted by COVID-19 um, uh, although there were transactions, um, a lot of uh, sellers, if they weren't serious, if they weren't urgent, um, they pulled their listing off the market. And if the buyers weren't serious, they weren't going to buy. So um, we can look at the April 2020 number. We compared to March, we've dropped a significant 63%. Um, down to about 3,000 transaction um, from 8,000. And compared to the year before, where in April of 2019, we did about 9,000 transaction. So that's another drop of 63%. In terms of active listings, here we can see that um, a lot, you know, right now we have a lot less listings on the market, about 6,200 listings, as opposed to 10,000 in March. This is mainly due to a lot of sellers pulling their listings off the market because they're not getting the price that they want or they are banking on the fact that the market is going to be better in a couple of months. So they would rather wait it out. So we have a big drop of the number of listings, number 42% less compared to the year before where we had 18,000 list, active listings in the month of April, this is about one third. So we lost about 66% um, of uh, listings. The average days on market hasn't really changed much. Um, this is due to the fact that um, because there are so few uh, sales, meaning a lot less buyer, but also a lot less sellers so few listings so the average days on market has pretty much stayed the same 24 days compared to march was 17 days and last year um, in april was 26 days so the market is somewhat of a balanced market but at a, at a very low volume um, we can also look at the average home price and that gives you an indication of why the i said the market is quite balanced the average home price hasn't dropped that much um, yes compared to march it has dropped about nine percent um, but don't forget the months leading to march the prices have gone up so much so now we're back to april 2019 
figures. In back in April 2019, the average home price was about 820,000 or 821,000. So that gives you an idea that we are somewhat in a balanced market, but in a slower market. So was my prediction correct? Well, I said home price was gonna drop eight to 10%, we dropped about 9%. Um, I said the number of sales would drop about 40 to 50%. We actually dropped a lot more. We dropped uh, almost 63%. So I hit it somewhat in the right direction, um, but I think uh, the market has done a little bit worse than I, I predicted. In the next um, exercise, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down the numbers into two different categories. We will first look at um, the data set that we're gathering. It's only pertaining to the Toronto region, Peel region, York region, and Durham region. This encompasses a majority of the sale that happens um, in the last uh, month or so. First, we're gonna look at condominiums. What I have here is a graph of the number, total number of sales of condominiums in all these four regions. And I've broken them down into two different categories. Condos that are less than a million and condos that are over a million. So the purple line here, um, the darker purple line is condo less than a million. And from January 2020, February, March and April, we can see that it was going up slightly and then it came sharply back down. For the more luxury condominium, the ones that are over a million, um, their numbers haven't gone up and down as much, but definitely a big decline in April. Um, went down to about 30 sales only as opposed to 143 in March. So that's about one fifth of the numbers. Next, we're gonna take a look at freehold. Now freehold could be um, detached homes, semi-detached, could be townhouses. And if we look at same idea, number of sales uh, month, and I've broken the freehold down into three different categories. First category is less than one and a half million. Um, that's Traditionally, a million dollar is considered a luxury home, but in the past 10 years or so, that um, criteria has gone up to maybe uh, 1.5 million. So 1.5 million and above will be considered luxury homes. And then the next category I have is 1.5 million to 3 million. Um, those are probably your, your upgrade homes. So something that uh, in a better neighborhood, um, better, bigger size, bigger lot, they will fall under 1.5 to 3 million. And then we have the ultra luxury homes, those that are costing over 3 million dollars. So if we look at the chart, the homes under 1.5 million um, had a big increase from January to February. Um, over 14,000 uh, unit increase. Um, but from February to March, um, it's pretty much the same. And then we saw a big drop into back down to about 1,500 in April. If we look at the uh, next level up, um, the line is a little bit flatter, although we did have uh, 470 uh, sales of uh, homes between 1 million and a half and 3 million in March. And that number dropped down to about 128. So that's uh, about one quarter of the sales. And then if we look at the ultra luxury, um, we can see that we started at 37 um, in January. In April, we only had 17. So every price point still moving but the lower price point has a bigger drastic effect um, of a drop so what is my outlook for may for this month um, i believe that the number the sales 
will go up by 10%. And the average price will be up to around $850,000. This is because from after talking to a lot of current buyers and sellers, um, we get the idea that a lot of sellers are off the market now. They're predicting that June is going to be a better time for them to sell. So they are staying out of market. And a lot of buyers, because they see that the city is slowly opening up, they are having a little bit more confidence. So it, in that regard, they are more willing to pay a little bit more now in order to avoid having it go into multiple offer situation come June or July when the whole economy um, slowly opens up. So this month, we're going to see a little bit more activity. We are also going to see a little bit rise in the average home prices. So that's my prediction for May. I will come back in early June once we have the numbers for May and we will do another recap and to see if I missed the mark or if I hit it right on the nail. So that's my quick look at the numbers for April 2020. I hope that you found it useful. As always, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more informative content and follow me on Instagram. My contact information will be at the end of the video. Um, this is it. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.